Hello friends, in this video, we will learn gains from trade. In the past, we saw few trade theories which explained how trade increases efficiency of both the nations. Today, we'll see explicitly of how countries gain from trade. There are many such benefits of trading. However, in this video, we will cover the three main benefits. The first being that trading increases the utility of both the nations. Secondly, it increases world production. And lastly, we will see how reciprocal demand can help countries to gain from trade. Let's start with the first one. Let's see how the utility of countries can increase by trade. At the end of the day, it's utility that matters. So let's take two countries, say India and China. Let's say India produces spices and mobile phones. However, we know that India is better at producing spices and less efficient at producing mobile phones. So India's budget line which showcases efficiency will look somewhat like this. This showcases that India is very efficient at producing spices but not so efficient at producing mobile phones. Hence, if we plot an indifference curve which maximizes utility for India, then it would be tangent to the budget line somewhere here. Similarly, if say even China is producing spices as well as mobile phones, then her budget line would look somewhat like this. This showcases that China is efficient at producing mobile phones but not efficient at producing spices. Hence, the utility maximizing indifference curve would be somewhat here. Now if you notice, both for India and China, the utility that they receive if they produce both the commodities in their countries itself is nearly the same. Let's say 1000 units. However, if both the countries trade with each other such that India only produces spices and China only produces mobile phones and trade mobiles for spices then both countries, instead of acting like two different countries, would act like a single country. Hence, the maximum spices that could be produced would be here and the maximum mobile phones that could be produced for there. This will give us a budget line, which is higher than the budget line which were there before. Hence, the utility maximizing indifference curve will also increase, let's say, to 2000 units. One can clearly see how by trading both the countries could increase their utility. Let us now understand how the world production can increase if countries trade with each other. Let's look at this schedule. Here, we have taken two countries, India and Japan. Let's say both the countries use 10 units of labor to produce machines as well as cloth. Let's say 5 units of labor is used to make machines and 5 units of labor is used to make cloth. Now look at the production cell. We can see that 
by using 5 units of labor india produces 4 units of machine and by using other 5 labors india produces 20 units of cloth similarly japan by using 5 units of labor produces 20 units of machine and by the other 5 produces 20 units of cloth one thing is clear that japan is better at producing cloth as well as machine whereas india is not as efficient in producing machines hence ideally one wouldn't want japan to trade at all because it has no incentive in trading with india the total production in india is 20 plus 4 24 units whereas in japan it's 20 plus 20 which equals 40 units so the total world production considering japan and india being the only two countries in the world would be 64 units however let's say india only produces cloth which it is efficient at and japan only produces machines which it is efficient at india by utilizing 10 units of labor now can produce 40 units of cloth similarly by utilizing 10 units of labor japan can produce 40 units of machines we can clearly see that the world production here increases from 64 to 80 hence the propagators of trade would also agree that trade increases world population that is why countries should trade with each other to understand the third gains from trade we need to first understand what we mean by offer curves let's understand this with the help of this diagram we have england plotted on the x-axis and portugal plotted on the y-axis let's say you're talking about two commodities cloth and wine we also assume barter system so one commodity is traded for the other here we can say that england produces only cloth and portugal produces only wine the offer curve for england would look somewhat like this this showcases that for higher and higher quantities of export of cloth england would demand more and more quantities of wine from portugal in the beginning the curve is flat indicating that england is willing to offer more for a little amount of wine however as the exports start to get higher england would be willing to offer a lesser amount of cloth for more amount of wine this could be for multiple reasons one of them could be as they offer higher cloth cloth for their own consumption reduces hence for any additional unit of cloth they would demand more of wine another reason could be that after a while their demand for wine could get met and hence they would not require additional unit of wine 
So for any additional unit of cloth that Portugal demands, England will ask for more wine. Similarly, Portugal's offer curve would look somewhat like this. Notice that the shape of the curve is like this because we have plotted Portugal on the y-axis or else both the offer curves represent the same thing. The equilibrium between the two takes place at this point. Here, England is exporting ON amounts of cloth for OM amounts of wine from Portugal. And that's how exchange is taking place. Now, let's say that England would not have traded with Portugal and had liked to produce wine as well as cloth in its own country. The internal rate of exchange within England can be showcased by this line. This showcases England is more efficient at making cloth than wine. Hence, if England would not have traded with Portugal, then England by offering ON units of cloth would have just got OR units of wine within the country. Hence, you can clearly see that England gains this much amount by trading with Portugal. Similarly, the line represents Portugal's internal rate of exchange. As Portugal is better off at making wine, you can clearly see that if Portugal wished to have ON units of cloth, it would have to provide OP units of wine. However, by trading with England, it just has to offer OM units. Hence, it saves this much. You can clearly see that by trading, England gives this much and Portugal saves this much. This makes trading more attractive. So we have one more reason why countries should trade with each other. These were the three gains from trade that we learned. I urge you guys to read your books to find more of them. That's it from this video. See you in the next one. Thank you.